Instagram, TikTok versus YouTube. Which platform should you be on to see the most success? Let's talk about the pros and cons of each platform so that by the end of this video, I can help you decide which platform would be the best choice for you. What's up friends, I'm Millie, I'm an influencer coach and welcome back to another weekly video helping you grow your brand and make money while doing it. As always, timestamps will be in the comments down below because I value your time and you already know I hear, so let's just jump right in, shall we? Instagram. The first thing we need to address is the question, is Instagram dead? Instagram currently has over 2 billion active users monthly with 60% of its users logging in to watch and post 500 million stories daily. I have students in my Instagram course that are seeing great results on Instagram currently, like this year. Kelly started an account from zero and gained over 40,000 followers in six months. We have Ryan who at 375 followers landed his first paid brand collaboration at $100. So with that being said, no. If there are people like Kelly and Ryan currently seeing amazing results, Instagram is not dead. Pros and cons. Pros. Every content type is available on Instagram. Name another platform where you can post photos, videos, stories, go live, message your followers, send voice memos, hop on calls with your followers, and do collaboration posts that reach both audiences. There isn't one. There just isn't one. So no matter what content type you like to create, Instagram has it. Instagram is also the easiest platform for beginners. They have a very low barrier to entry. You don't have to be a video is to see success. Yes, we know Instagram's pushing reels, but the barrier to entry is low. Even if you have zero video skills, you can create a photo, educational graphic, memes, and be consistent with another content type before jumping into something that you might not feel ready for. Instagram has the most monetization features for creators. Instagram has eight ways that you can monetize on their platform. And while not every feature is available to everyone yet because it's being tested on specific accounts or in specific countries, they exist. The eight features on Instagram that allow you to monetize are Instagram affiliate, live badges, reels bonuses, reels ads, setting up your own shop, brand partnerships, NFTs and monthly subscriptions. Even though they don't have all the kinks rolled out yet, at least they're making those big moves to start offering creators a variety of ways to make money for different niches and industries. Instagram is the best platform for sales and building a community. If you're someone who is struggling on Instagram right now, you might be laughing at what I just said or rolling my eyes. But once I explain and go through all the pros and cons of other platforms, you'll have a new appreciation for the Instagram app. Instagram is the only platform where you can attract new eyes, build and nurture a community, nurture relationships with your followers and convert followers into customers or clients. You literally have every avenue to communicate with your community how you want, and that's how they're vastly different compared to other social media platforms. Finally, Instagram is still the number one app for influencer marketing spend. In 2022, we saw about $16.4 billion being put into the influencer marketing industry. And while we don't have the data for 2022 yet for this one, in 2020, 2021, Instagram still came on top for most brands putting their influencer marketing budget towards Instagram. Because again, it's the easiest way to build a loyal and engaged community that trusts you on that platform. Now let's talk about the cons. I think we all know what I'm going to say. First of all, the algorithm waves. Ah, uh, yes, the dreaded algorithm. How can we talk about Instagram without bringing up the algorithm? This is probably the number one biggest complaint Instagram users have is trying to please the algorithm and dealing with the random drops in engagement that come out of nowhere, right? The number two complaint is bots. Instagram has a lot of bot accounts that spam, comment, and follow, making it harder to gauge what an accurate engagement rate is. The average platform engagement rate is 3%, which means if your post can reach 3% of your followers, you're doing great. And finally, it's harder to attract new eyes on the Instagram app without the right strategy, making it potentially harder to grow compared to apps like TikTok. It is possible to reach new eyes, but it might be the hardest to reach new eyes. Now, before we talk about TikTok, if you've been looking for like an all-in-one social media tool scheduler that helps you schedule and automate your posts on every social media platform, you're going to love this video sponsor, Metrical. One of the biggest pain points I see creators struggle with and myself is juggling multiple platforms and all the content that's supposed to be posted to all of those platforms. 
but you don't have to struggle with that anymore. Here are some of the main reasons why I recommend Metricool. First of all, it's one tool to rule them all. You have direct scheduling for Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, etc. I love being able to schedule my posts to auto post when I'm not able to show up live or when my team's not able to post for me live and they make that possible. Metricool is also extremely cost effective. It's free for solopreneurs who maybe you're only juggling an Instagram account, a TikTok account, YouTube account, just like one account per platform. But if you're a social media manager, agency, or business owner where you have multiple Instagram pages or multiple TikTok pages, you can join their premium membership starting at $12 a month with an annual subscription. My favorite tool is the dashboard and PDF reporting. My team, we download our monthly report every month We've been using Metricool for months and this tool is just is the coolest. This helps us look at our analytics and properly adjust our content strategy for the following month. I'll be sure to leave a link down below where you can try them out. And if you're a business, you can use the code Modern Millie for your 15 day free trial. I'm stoked to be able to share Metricool with all of you and hope I'm able to connect this information to the right people who have been looking for something like this. Now let's talk about TikTok. TikTok is the newest of the platforms that we're gonna be talking about today with, at the time of recording, has over 1 billion active users monthly, which is 1 billion less than Instagram. Pros, TikTok's a baby. Even if you start a TikTok page today, you are still ahead of the curve. TikTok launched in 2017 after rebranding from Musical.ly, making it five years old. You can still be a first adapter and trendsetter when looking at TikTok's age compared to Instagram or YouTube. For example, YouTube launched 2005, making it 17 years old. Imagine if people didn't start YouTube channels five years into their launch because they believed it was too late, or even 10 years after they launched because they believed it was oversaturated. You know who didn't care about that? Emma Chamberlain. Emma Chamberlain started her YouTube channel in 2017, which was the same year she went viral. That was 12 years after YouTube launched. TikTok's still a baby. You can still be ahead of the curve, joining even in the next five years. Another pro, their SEO is skyrocketing creators. TikTok's search engine capabilities is amazing, increasing the overall user experience where users can easily search and find videos they're interested in and giving creators the ability to be easily discoverable on the platform. Also, small creators have more of an opportunity to get on the For You page, increasing virality. The main page, default page on TikTok is the For You page. Literally, when you're scrolling, it's all people that you don't follow, which means every user by default is being introduced to dozens of new creators daily. Also, TikTok is short form video royalty. They are the king and queen when it comes to short form content. If you love creating videos like that, TikTok's the place to be. Now, while there are a lot of great pros for TikTok, as the platform becomes well known and older, creators are becoming more vocal about the downside of being a TikTok creator. One, it's incredibly hard to nurture a following or relationship or community on TikTok. You have creators like Miss Darcy who has over 500,000 followers on TikTok. She hosted a meet and greet, posted about it, and nobody showed up. People were speculating that it's because a lot of followers didn't know about it. And why is that? Well, con number two, a majority of users spend most of their time on the For You page not the following page. So even if you have followers, it's less likely that they will see your videos unless they go viral again and end up on the For You page. As you can see in this tweet, we have creator Matt Navarra say that growth on TikTok is becoming harder and harder with Taylor Lorenz saying, many users don't follow people on the app. They just come to consume content on the For You page. And I'm even guilty of this. After spending all of my energy on Instagram, engaging and talking with followers every day, I go to TikTok to disassociate. It's like my mindless platform where I can just scroll. And even when I do find a creator I follow, I hardly ever spend time scrolling through my following tab. This is something I'm trying to work on so I can make sure I'm supporting creators I do follow, but it's a hard habit to break, especially if you're not aware you're doing it. For those reasons, creators have said that having 10,000 followers on TikTok is almost the equivalent of having 1,000 followers on Instagram. Finally, people are quick to believe in the shiny new toy syndrome. They like the idea of a new app being like the secret to quick effortless overnight success, when in reality, 
TikTok has the same issues every social media platform has. I'm in a Slack channel with a bunch of TikTok creators and their complaints and concerns look the same as those who complain about Instagram and YouTube. TikTok removing accounts randomly, videos getting deleted for no reason, talking about a shadow ban being a thing, engagement randomly dropping. And it's not like one-off instances, it's a thread of creators struggling with these same things. So if you think a new platform means everything's going to be easy breezy, no issues, you're wrong. Now what's interesting with TikTok that isn't relevant to Instagram or YouTube because it's such in its early days is that we don't quite know where they're gonna go with the app yet. We don't know the direction they're taking. Here's an interesting prediction from a TikTok creator, Coco Moco. A lot of people think that TikTok is competing with Instagram and YouTube, but I actually think that they're gonna start competing with Hulu, Netflix, HBO. And while they're not gonna have super intricate shows, I think they're gonna start rewarding creators who can go on live stream and keep an audience on for hours. One creator who's doing this really well is Psychonic. Psychonic goes live for five, six plus hours a night and is able to keep an audience of over 100,000 on almost the entire time. The same way that thousands of people might stream a Netflix show in one sitting. And yes, that is Doja Cat. Celebrities call into this live stream. It's, I've never seen anything like it. TikTok is going to start valuing creators who make longer videos versus 10 second videos because it keeps an audience on the app for longer. And keep in mind, when live streaming, it doesn't really have to be about entertainment. People just watch live streamings because they want companionship. I think TikTok is going to start paying for the rights to shows like Chicken Shop Date with Emilia Dims to have the show stream from TikTok and only for TikTok. And I think we might even see creators become millionaires almost overnight as TikTok starts buying the streaming rights, the same way Spotify did for Call Her Daddy to the tune of 60 million. Finally, we have YouTube. YouTube has 2.2 billion monthly active users on their platform. Pros, searchability. I mean, YouTube is owned by Google. If you search something up on Google and you have those keywords in your YouTube video, it's very possible that your YouTube video can land on search results in Google as well as YouTube search results. Their SEO is down pat. Next, YouTube has the highest shelf life for any social media app out there. Now, shelf life is basically how long a piece of media can live on for. So you have Instagram stories, they last 24 hours. In-feed photo or carousel posts on Instagram, probably 24, 48 hours. An Instagram reel, up to two weeks. TikTok, their videos have a little bit longer shelf life, helping TikTok videos last a few weeks, and even some that go viral can be up to a few months. With YouTube, the shelf life is almost never ending. I have content that is three, five years old that is still getting watched daily, making YouTube the best platform for evergreen content to constantly be existing and thriving. Next, I think they have the best payout system for creators. Videos that I'm getting views for that are three to five years old, I get paid on those views. Instagram, you have reels bonuses. You only get paid for the 30 days that you get those views or that you get those plays. Their payout is going to look different for every account in every niche, but ultimately you can have a video that's five years old making you money to this day. Which also leads me to my next pro, it's great passive income. I could stop posting to my YouTube channel and my videos are still appearing in search results. My videos will still be getting plays. I could probably stop for th months and all of those videos that are still getting views, I'm getting paid for. And of course, long form content, they are the most well-known platform when it comes to long form videos. And if you're somebody who enjoys to create long form videos or watch long form videos, YouTube's going to be your home. Now let's talk about cons. YouTube can be the hardest to grow. There is a huge learning curve when it comes to learning keywords, how to rank in specific searches, learning thumbnails, how to title videos, how to put accurate descriptions in your videos. And because they use more of like an evergreen system, it's not like when you post the first 24 hours, you get the most engagement. Like, no, it might take a year before a video blows up. For my channel, for example, I had a video that was two years old that randomly took off 
after I had posted it, like two years after I had posted it. So you never know what video is going to blow up and you never know when that video is going to blow up. Also, it is the most time consuming app because you have the filming portion, scripting, maybe outlining, editing is a whole beast in and of itself, learning the platform, making the thumbnails, it is the most time consuming platform. So with that being said, it is a higher commitment. So how do you decide which platform you should be on? Instagram, TikTok, or YouTube? Really what it comes down to is four things. Your strengths, what are you good at? Your capacity, what do you have the time to spend on? Your interests, do you even enjoy making long form video? Do you even enjoy making short form videos? What do you actually enjoy creating? And then finally, your gut. When you think about where you wanna be in the next three to five years, what platform excites you the most? If you said, oh, I'm a YouTuber, how does that feel? Or if you say, I'm a TikToker, how does that feel? I'm an influencer, how does that feel? Which path excites you the most? Listen to your gut, follow your interests and the things that bring you the most joy, and then be realistic with what you have the time to commit to and what your strengths are. So if you have to, like get a piece of paper, write down strengths, capacity, interests or things that bring you joy, and then like gut instincts, write everything down and you'll find a common denominator. Here's the thing. Each platform is going to have its quirks. If you're someone who gives up when it becomes hard, you blame it on the platform and then you switch apps, you're never gonna see results. You're not gonna see results. Any platform can work for you as long as you put in the work. It's as simple as that. You need to stop putting minimal effort in and expecting maximum results. If you've made it this far and you're not already subscribed, be sure to hug that subscribe button and turn on the bell notification so you don't miss when I post my next video. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching. Follow your joy. Bye.